Steve? You're on mute. You accidentally hit the mute. Let's do it again. Steve, what's up? Normally, I don't do the soft mute, but this time I was clearing my throat, and I did thank you very much for letting me know I was on soft mute. Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to Trade of the Week. March 20th is a great day to do Trade of the Week, and I uh, can't believe it's Tuesday again already. So here we are. Thanks for showing up, everybody. Um, <clears throat> Andy's going to help me out, and uh, let's get started. i got the questions box up. And uh, let's just get right into it. Uh, the first slide is, of course, the disclaimer slide, reminding you all that we are not registered investment advisors. We did not take the fiduciary responsibility exams. And if you're looking for financial advice, you got to go to those people, the brokers and the RIAs. Uh, we are just um, big fans and employees of the product here at Trade Ideas. Uh, we're content service providers, uh, software service. And so we're going to show you some cool stuff um, today. And just don't please confuse this, anything you see or hear with investment advice. All right, so we got that out of the way. The other slide, which is very important, is the fact that you're not alone when you sign up with Trade Ideas. It's a very comprehensive tool, 14, 15 years in the making. There's a lot going on. Matter of fact, I'm gonna show you guys something today that uh, I just learned about and I think you're really gonna like as well. Uh, but back to this slide, you know, one of the reasons that we have um, a lot of happy customers is the amount of attention that we try to give and uh, make ourselves available to the new users, whether it's the live trading room here with uh, Barry's screenshot, trading his own account using Trade Ideas technology and doing a great job of moderating a room full of, you know, four to 600 people, depending upon the day, who's in there. And it's a free uh, room, it's a free live trading room, and free is a great price. I think we're slowly starting to get the word out that um, this is a very viable live trading room. Uh, Barry does not like to call it a chat room, so we go out of our way to not call it a chat room. It's a live trading room. And it, it's uh, it's basically going from bell to bell, you know, half an hour before the bell opens all the way into the close uh, during the trading days. Um, if you want more information on that, you know, just look at the header panel on our website and our homepage, you'll see a live trading room and you can click in and create an account for that. Beyond the live trading room are the afternoon webinars uh, like we're doing at this moment. So basically, you know, two o'clock Eastern, I'm sorry, five o'clock Eastern, uh, we do the afternoon webinars. So yesterday was myself and Jamie and today is the usual trade of the week. Tomorrow is uh, typically Dan, the CEO, and Brad, so you can get an idea of what's coming down the road uh, with um, their um, mad scientist brains uh, and the development uh, process. Tomorrow, I'm sorry, Thursday, uh, will be Andy taking the helm and delivering some good content with help uh, from Jamie Hodge. And then Friday, if you're not aware of it, it's open to anybody, whether you're a subscriber or not. You can come in and ask questions. It's an open forum Q&A session. That's the one that's 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern time on Fridays. Uh, hope to see anybody there with any question that we're able to handle. All right. Um, <laughs> I've already teased a couple people, I can tell you. Um, beyond that, we we have the, I don't know if we have a slide yet for Trade Ideas University. Uh, we need to get one in here. But um, for subscribers, um, you know, you no longer have to jump in the queue for a few weeks of a one-on-one -on -one training session wait. We have a four-day curriculum that starts off with the 101, the basics, and ends on Thursdays, <clears throat> 401, the advanced class. And those all take place at 12 noon Eastern during the market day. And again, uh, when you're a subscriber, you can sign up for the Trade Ideas University, and you can get up to speed pretty quick uh, between Monday and Thursday with the curriculum that we've all set out. It's basically all of the uh, the guys here, myself, Jamie, Andy, and Sean, um, kind of take turns uh, manning a two-man booth using the GoToWebinar interface that you're watching and, and asking questions and, and using right now. So Friday support sessions are a great deal, and the Trade Ideas University uh, is also a good deal. I'm trying to remember to update that slide for you guys next time. Um, all of that translates into wonderful subscriber growth. And again, this slide does need to be updated as well because we're into 2018 now. And um, the uh, uh, the uh, subscriber growth is what we're you know most proud of. And so all of that is one of the reasons that we're into the subscriber growth doing so well. Uh, Brokerage Plus for interactive brokers, for those that have a, um, a interactive broker, account and for those that have a, a premium account you can tie trade ideas 
into uh, live trade, I'm sorry, automated trading, either one click, one click send or just full on auto. But this is something that's reserved really for, um, for advanced users, intermediate users. You're gonna really wanna learn your trading methods and develop your own scans and alerts uh, to deploy uh, before you try something like this. So just a, a word of caution on this. This is an advanced uh, intermediate um, type of a tool. All uh, right, no man is better, better than a machine, and no machine is better than a man with a machine, and that's what we like to consider ourselves. We're human traders using a machine to help try and give us an edge, and that's where Trade Ideas uh, definitely comes in. So the agenda for today is we'll go through a market recap. Uh, we'll go through the AI recap. Uh, the trade of the week this week was GOLF. Uh, we'll check out a couple other things, uh, a couple of the other past trades of the week as well. And yes, I'm still gonna tease you guys here. Check this out. Um, hopefully, you know, you guys will find this interesting. If somebody's gotta leave early and they wanna find out what this was gonna be, well, it's a good thing we're recording this, um, this webinar so you can check it out later on the YouTube channel. It's basically a, a feature that uh, has not really been talked a lot about at all. And I think based on some of the support and questions and the feedback we get, this is something a lot of people have asked for and uh, are gonna like. And then time permitting, as we get towards the top of the hour, we might have time for a couple of charts that we can take a look at for um, giving you guys a second opinion on a couple different eyeballs. So let's just uh, get started here in our format, which is um, starting off with uh, what's going on in the market. Well, uh, as when we last spoke, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, we were coming back down here and I was talking about the market giving a nice pullback and possibly filling the uh, the gap and trying to build a higher base camp from which the spiders can move higher. But given um, Friday and Monday, Tuesday, uh, we haven't really seen that. It's been a bit disappointing for the bulls. So uh, the price action has been bleeding through an area that I thought would be a, uh, an area of, um, of support. So that's a red mark. That's a bit of a caution flag for the bulls there. The good news is though, and it'll be more evident on the queues, you know, today we kind of had just perfect doji day. For those that don't know what a doji is, that's what it is, that little plus sign right there. Basically, we closed right where we opened, a little bit of noise in between, no harm, no foul, kind of a day of rest. But when I go to the queues, what I noticed, uh, again, same thing back here we were talking about, trying to hold on to prior resistance in the, uh, in the queues to become current support. Well, the price did not bounce and go higher. The price bled and then gapped down over the weekend lower. Notice the bottom end of that candle there on that uh, little wick. It did tap and push through the 50-day, but that's an, a level that seemed to have been defended. So it bounced right back through that 50-day uh, and closed above it. Well, today we got kind of the same thing, a spinning top or a little doji, whatever you want to call it, but with a green body. So kind of a day of rest, um, not much follow, no follow through whatsoever to the downside. So, you know, sometimes you'll see this after a big move up or a big move down, we call it like a day of rest. The, the following day can be a, a slow, uh, tight, narrow range where the market kind of tries to figure out what just happened and where are we going from here. So tomorrow, you know, I would really key off of the high and the low off of this narrow range day. Um, and then if it either the high or the low is taken out, uh, ideally there could be some follow through either to the downside or maybe this is the beginnings of uh, a bounce. Um, in the IWM land, which is the Russell 2000, got pretty, pretty darn close there to a double top and much of the same, it tried to dig in and bounce, but uh, it hasn't pulled back as bad. The IWM Russell 2000 has been pretty stoic in terms of holding up through uh, some of the volatility and selling lately, especially that long tail yesterday. You know, the NASDAQ had a bit of a tail. Well, the IWM did the same thing. It bounced off its 20 and 50 day here with a nice long tail. And that's usually a you know, short-term bullish sign, especially after a couple of consecutive down days. We'll see if that holds. Same thing again today, just a nice little spinning uh, doji right next to it. And then lastly, the Dow. Um, Dow, you know, Andy pointed out, rightfully so, it's kind of building itself into a wedge and it continues to do so. So I'm not going to take the moment to draw the lines, but if we drew the lines from the top, we've got kind of a triangle coming down here, the top end of the triangle and the bottom edge, maybe take some of that wick out and kind of use the body candles. So what that's telling us here is the Dow has been kind of plucked like a guitar string and it's just vacillating back and forth within that wedge. And at some point, you know, you guys might want to draw your, draw your own lines on the diamonds or the Dow 
Uh, that's the thing that point that, that st stands out most to me is the wedge that's kind of developing there um, in the Dow. And so those were some of my observations. Did you have anything you wanted to add? Uh, no, I agree, Steve. And, and we said back uh, about a month ago that it's, it's very possible that we get into a, a, a very difficult, you know, trading range here. And that's kind of that's kind of what's happening, if you, especially with the diamonds and the spiders. Uh, there's a lot of slop, uh, typically. Uh, if you're a very active trader, uh, it, well, either way, if you're a swing, whatever you are, it can be a very difficult time for trading. This is when you may want to pull back, rest a little bit, wait for the move, um, <clears throat> because uh, it, it, a lot. When you get in these kind of patterns, sometimes you need a catalyst to kind of break out of. It just doesn't happen naturally. I notice the volumes are way down. Look at the relative volume on the diamonds there, 0.45 spiders. So now you're seeing some some really apathetic trading in a range, and you just might want to be patient because I don't. There needs to be some sort of catalyst, catalyst, and maybe it's another uh, you know three or four weeks till the next earnings season rolls around because uh, we could be in this funky range for a while. Yeah, all four of those ETFs that we've just looked at are all well below their relative volume, and David was chiming in on the questions right as you were saying the same thing. You're correct. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of why I called it a day of rest. So on a day of rest, it's really not surprising to see uh, the low relative volumes like we saw today. But again, let's just go back to the spies. You know, uh, what I would be keying off tomorrow, guys, is uh, are we going to take out the high of the range today in the doji? Or are we going, gosh darn it, let me try that again. We just So you have a visual. Are we going to take out the high of that range in today's doji? Or the low in this range of today's doji? And that might um, signal uh, further direction of whichever side of the um, the small day of rest it takes here. And look at that tiny volume bar on the spiders. I think that's probably the lowest of the year. That says it all, really, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. oh my gosh, look at that compared to these days back here. And wow. really, guys, I noticed I noticed yesterday on that big red candle, the the volume was pretty anemic. I don't even think we were we were still below uh, one relative volume. On yeah, this it was. It, was. it yeah. wasn't. Uh, it wasn't that bad uh, on the downside yesterday. Cues were a little bit more because you have uh, Facebook getting yeah. hammered. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we did have a big uh, big problem. If you haven't seen Facebook's uh, having some issues, a uh, couple of big candles there on some massive selling. All right, let's do it. What's the VIX doing? What are the insurance buyers doing today? Well, same thing in the opposite, you know, kind of a little doji uh, half, uh, I'm sorry, a little narrow range bar inside of yesterday's uh, movement. Uh, weakness on the other charts will show strength here in the VIX as people try to buy insurance. And I think the smart stop there on that uh, chart, which Trade Ideas has basically identified, you know, I think as long as the VIX stays above that line, you know, there still could be some fear and trepidation here in this market as people continue to buy um, buy insurance. But if the price action slides back down below these levels, well, chances are you're going to be seeing the spies and the queues rallying pretty hard. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so that's it for a market recap. Um, very good. Let's go to Holly recap. Well. First thing I noticed today about Holly is uh, coming in, there was a long string of uh, strategies going to the long side, and there is uh, about four or so strategies to the downside. And when all was said and done, well, we don't even have to look at the trades yet, just look at this histogram of uh, the risk on. Um, for two thirds of the day, this was just a wild mess. And this is the kind of you know high level information that we can use to see that you know if the statistically probable unemotional AI is having a hard time finding its way through the forest today, well then you know what are my chances? So you know let's go you know into the closed positions. The other thing that stood out was that there was no directional bias today. You know typically the AI finds a directional bias and stays with it. And believe it or not, yesterday, for those of you who were, you know, here yesterday, the directional bias was down yesterday, and you know, Holly was on kind of the right side of things, and there was, um, there was, uh, you know, profits were shown in the AI window, but it was all on the downside for the most part. I think there was one long trade in there. Well, today, we're back to no bias. Um, we're back to just a scatter of shorts and longs. And if you look at the uh, the PNL, the, the best trade of the day for Holly was a short, but the second best one was a long, and the third best one was a long. So, very bifurcated in the uh, str in, in in the um, uh, directional bias. Again, I forgot that word, directional bias. A lot of days, you know, when Holly's kind of seeing the uh, seeing things and making things work, we see nothing but long trades. So this is kind of an unusual day to see both long and shorts uh, pretty much 
maybe 60 40 uh, sprinkled in here for the most part so again that's another um, cautionary uh, visual uh, that the trade ideas AI bot is just not seeing it um, now of course there was a, uh, a little lift at the end of the day but you know that was just the market doing its thing and anything that was still open was getting a little bit of a lift you know from this particular move in the day but you can see how the histogram very much kind of almost tracks the general market of the day pretty choppy a little bit of a lift towards the end of the day and then um, some selling falling into the close so not too surprised to see um, the histogram and the S&P kind of match up like that there was definitely no directional bias um, no way of really just kind of letting one thing work there was a lot of the AI was trying a lot of things and a lot of it wasn't working so we've said it before the AI can be our canary in the coal mine and on a day like today you know she's telling us things like you know lower trade count lower share size you know, watch your risk because uh, the unemotional robot is not seeing it today and today is just one day guys and I mean I pulled the screenshot up to remind everybody that since the inception of Holly it's been a nice casino odds type of trajectory versus the blue line here of the S&P and I just kind of threw a red circle around the recent volatility that we've had and how both um, uh, indexes and AI have kind of corresponded to that. So, you know, AI is going to have a bad day every now and then, but in the long run, the casino odds are in the aggregate favor of what the AI is doing and calling out. So that's kind of what I saw. I don't know what you feel like. Uh, if you have anything you want to add, Andy, I'm on open ears. Yeah, I'm the same way. I mean, all you have to do is look at those spiders. I mean, it was it was like I said, apathetic trading, no volume, and just slop back and forth. I mean, just a very tight range and and pretty much a you know a doji or spinning top, whatever you want to call it. Um, actually, the, yeah, the spiders were a perfect doji. Look at that. Just uh, uh, and, and and yeah, I mean, I, I, the AI didn't have any advantage too because the. AI needs price action to move, you know, out of, you know, along, along with in the market, I think a lot of times to obviously get the, uh, the price action to move in some of her uh, ideas. But I do want to point out one because a, a lot of people ask me, you know, how do you, how do you look for, you know, potential swing trades in the AI? And I remember as soon as this one uh, went off, uh, I, um, I, I said to the guys in our little ch uh, chat forum here that we use, and uh, I said, man, I love this one for a swing. And I wish I was showing my screen. I'd, I'd show you the, my timestamp when I said this. But it was uh, a cure. Uh, cure, cure, however you pronounce that. Uh, but anyway, if Steve will zoom out a little bit on the daily, guys, I'll show you kind of a this. I love the, uh, the uh, contrarian uh, kind of a bullish trend change it's looking for. On the daily, that would be a contrary. You know, you're kind of buying weakness on the daily, but it had a turnaround. You can see the buy uh, sign, uh, uh, buy signal there at $21. But look at that daily, how the stock has just recently, you know, pushed through a multi-month high, and had been bleeding off for several days. Uh, geez, probably a couple of weeks, and and then it kind of pulled back to that support that you see over there on the on the left side there where Holly actually had a buy signal yeah beautiful support there and now you have a trend change uh, possibly developing on the uh, on the call there and uh, that's the kind of stuff you know guys when I see a Holly and you guys are, are saying you know how do you know if it's a you know a swing you know or you want to take a chance and swing just use your own ability to be able to read charts and um, you know understand support and resistance. A lot of times you can find some incredible swing trades. Now I'm not saying this is going to go back to highs, but I like the risk reward here. You you have nice support, you're buying off that support, and not only that, when it came through, it was doing about two relative volume. I remember noticing, and there you go, Steve's got a great picture of it there. It ended up with 1.25 just because of the, the, just the market the way it was. But uh, when it did come through, it was doing over two relative volume. But that's a nice pattern there, guys, when you're looking for potential uh, swing trades. You mentioned the word trend change. I'd probably hesitate to call it that because that means that this was a trend. and we were This thing has been higher lows, right. so it's kind of been trending. It's, if anything, Andy, it's right. probably more of a buy the dip. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I, well, I was referring to the name of the strategy, bullish trend change. Uh, uh, okay. so, right. Yeah, it's, it's, so it's that. not so much the trend is changing, but, yeah, it's it's just been in it's a massive downtrend, but now it has the potential to be, you know, maybe changing that trend. Another interesting thing I noted on that one was the intraday on uh, on the um, 
on the Holly trigger, it triggered right here on the buy tag on that blue, mm -hmm. went up and then basically started to sell back off and then Holly put in the profit save or what we would call you know, trailing stop. But look at where the sell stopped and abated and found support and then bounced right in just at the exact same spot as the entry. So I found that kind of interesting uh, yep, visually. That was. Um, but, um, you know. Uh, but other than that, yeah, it was, a, it was a rough day. It was a rough day for her. I mean, uh, noisy, very noisy yeah, day. I mean, yeah. I mean, not a this. whole lot of pain, but uh, yeah. You, know, you, you look in the parent window and you start to see, you know, today's win percentages. There's just not a whole lot of green in there. Uh, you know, back away if you're trying if you're trying to be really aggressive for whatever reason today. You know, the AI is kind of telling you, well, it hasn't worked out that well for me, and I'm usually pretty good at this stuff. But um, you know, take that for what for what it's worth. Mm -hmm. All right. So okay. Where to next? Let's go to the trade of the week. I'll go ahead and revisit the last three trade of the week, and we'll do it in reverse order. Um, golf was the trade of the week this week, and boy, what an interesting Monday we had yesterday. I was uh, typing feverishly to Andy on the open. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, let's take a look at kind of really what happened yesterday um, in two bigger – okay. So – you all recall yesterday that market had a pretty big gap down. So this was where the actual stock trade of the week opened yesterday, a big gap down. Now, remember in the content of the trade of the week, this is very similar to BOFI. It's a stock that's got a high short float around 30%, give or take a few, but it's getting close to going to, to all time highs. BOFI also, BOFI also was flirting with all time highs. And I'll take a look at that in a minute. Well, what happened here is the market um, gapped down and, uh, and, and the stock as well gapped down, traded down to this level. I want to highlight something for you here. That's 2277 was the low on the opening drive down yesterday. Well, as it is, the content that went out said that the stop was 2275. So not a bad identification of a possible stop level because the actual price action that traded yesterday only got two cents away from that level. But at the time, the trade was not live. We opened up gap down, back down, and then up. That's what creates that wick right there. And then a big giant green candle. What was this? This, in my opinion, maybe Andy will agree or disagree, but this, in my opinion, was all of these panicking short sellers woke up and said, I am not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. I just got a present. I'm going to start covering as much as I can to get out of this bad short position. And so we had a wild, I think, um, covering of certain tra um, stock traders getting out. And then we blasted through and triggered. <laughs> and we went all the way up to here. Giant range. That's crazy. Of yesterday just crazy triggered and then we fell back into the range and then as the markets were continually to go lower I'm just going to highlight this 2330 level that seems to be the intraday level that this stock wants to hold at least yesterday it did and now today the smart stop is even identifying what today's level is today's intraday level is about 2350 so if this thing can slowly climb its way back up and let's go back to the daily chart and start to look I'm going to take these off now so we can just have a clean look. If I was still short this stock, what is a fair statement if this price goes back to all-time highs and takes out yesterday? Well, a fair statement is there is not a single person or fund or investor or whatever you want to say that is in the money on a short position in golf because this is all-time highs. Now, it's just – it's a no-brainer. If we're at all-time highs and going higher, nobody with a capital N, nobody is making money on the short side. And when you have a stock that's doing that, and again, this is kind of a relatively new issue. It's only been around for about you know a year and a half at most. So it's still trying to find its legs and its valuation. Well, I would not want to be one of the short sellers if this thing gets back up to highs and starts moving higher because these are the exact ideas and the reason we chose this for trade of the week. Um, to try and catch, you know, the short sellers yelling fire in a crowded theater and propelling this thing even higher because nobody wants to be in a losing position. And if you feel like your back is against the wall and you're a short seller and you look over and you see 30% of the people are like you, you want to be the first one to get to that exit door. Um, what else can I say about this? So in the content of the 
of the of the email, I mentioned you know this is going to be a momentum swing trade. So basically, the momentum swing trade is going to I'm going to put the stop back in here uh, visually. The momentum swing trade is only going to give it this much downside. Um, we've got a little bit more data now that this 10 period moving average is moving higher. But for the most part, I want to use this 10 period moving average as the guide. And so when the article was written, the 10 period was closer to this level. But if we get a close on the daily chart below this rising 10 period moving average, I'm not going to like it. Um, yesterday we traded below, but the point was we closed above it. And the close is where we want to pay attention and put our focus on. I'll give you a great example when we look at BOFI for a moment. So. To reiterate, the uh, trade of the week in golf is active. Uh, the upside uh, is a 10% um, target above the entry point. Uh, the trade is live, and I like what it's doing. Back to the intraday here, I like the fact that it really shook out the volatility of the gap down, but it's working its way higher slowly, building kind of slow intraday higher base camps, and hopefully this will continue tomorrow. But I think the main gauge that I'm going to be watching is this 10 period moving average right here. So if we get a close below that 10 period moving average, well, for one thing, we're going to be close to our stop. But two, if that happened, uh, I wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be surprised if some people, you know, bailed out, especially if the markets were, were going to lows and taking out that doji today that we talked about. So the backdrop of the market tomorrow, if there's a lot of selling, and if GOLF closes below this rising moving average, well, then I'm going to start feeling less good about it. But for now, I'm feeling okay about it. You know, we withstood a lot of volatility yesterday, and the intraday is showing us that we're slowly finding support. Hopefully, we'll see the same thing. Uh, the prior trade of the week, not doing as good, Symantec. Um, basically, it's just been going back and forth between this range, but again, it's another short squeeze play. But it's not the same as BOFI and GOLF in terms of a rising trend. Um, making new all-time highs. So, you know, when I look at this, we can kind of see the trade ideas logic is lining right up to what I was going to tell you. Today's low, yesterday's low, uh, Friday's body of the candle right there, uh, this this body low right here, and then a little bit of a wick above that. This is kind of a pivot line that's showing up here, and the trade ideas technology smart stop is showing us that as well. This right here is the actual stop in the trade. You know, if the market gets weak and we start to slide back below this level that's held five or six days in a row, I'm going to get nervous about this trade. And I would say the same thing. I wouldn't fault anybody for maybe ditching it early um, rather than writing it down to the stop out. Uh, the best of the open three is BOFI. And I just love everything about this trade still. You know, initially the sideways action of a high float stock, high short float that is, pulled it back like pulling back the uh, um, the rubber band and then letting it go. And once it got above all-time highs right here, the short squeeze was on. Well, we're doing the same thing here. Look at all that noise we had yesterday, guys, with the gap down in the market. This is what I'm talking about when I say the price the trades down through the 10-period moving average but pops back up and closes above it. We're okay in my book. That's still intact, especially considering what happened yesterday with the volatility and the NASDAQ down over three points at one point. But here we are today, back handily above the rising 10-period moving average. You know, let's just grab this link right there. I'm going to move that price alert right about there. Um, maybe we get a 2.0 second stage move on BOFI. And I believe the uh, the, star, uh, the tar upside target on this one at 10% is right there. We're very close to making a 10% trade. Um, and so let's say what happens if we do uh, break through there and this congestion works in our favor and we get another push higher from the shorts, starting another round of covering like a momentum wheel, just continuing. Well, if we get to the 10% level, this is where Andy and I used to try and, you know, fade out of the things. You know, once they get in your position, once they get working for you in your favor, you know, it's, uh, it can be a good strategy to maybe sell a third, sell a quarter, or even sell a half and let the rest of it work for you because there's nothing worse than getting out for a good trade and then looking and saying, well, there is things worse, losing money is worse, but uh, leaving money on the table is no fun is where I was basically going with that. So how do you avoid leaving money on the table? A lot of times selling a third or selling a half and letting the other half work is so much more psychologically rewarding and easy to have patience, by the way, when you've locked in some profits ahead of time. So I like the way BOFI is trading. Um, where would I stop liking it? Uh, basically the same thing that I had said about golf. If BOFI posts a close below this rising 10-period moving average, I'd probably consider dumping it all 
uh, but that's just me because um, we're so close to our target up here. We've got to reward the troops and, and uh, you know, give them a hot shower and a warm bath. And I'm speaking of our confidence in metaphor when I talk like that. So um, that's the BOFI trade. I fully expect this to, you know, continue to move higher. And if we get to this orange line here, we're in the 10% mode. It might be time to start using a green candle, knock on wood, if we get it. There's nothing more fun than having a green candle and being in the money big time and then just sitting on the offer and letting people come to you and deliver you your profits. That's about as good as it gets in the terms of good feelings when trading. Anything you want to add, Mr. Andy? No, no, you covered them all very well. Bofi looks now it's flagging again. It's looking mm -hmm. for another explosive move for sure. I mean, if anybody's not in Bofi, you may want to, you know, put a price alert there at the most recent high and then tell yourself if it triggers, how would I feel if I was short this thing? Because there is not a single person or fund or entity that is making money shorting this thing at all-time highs. They're all losing, and they all might start scrambling for the exits, and that's what helps propel the price higher um, is what we would call a short squeeze. All right. Uh, very good. So that covers the trade of the week. So now it's time to kind of unveil the thing I was teasing about. Um, so a lot of times we will get questions that say, does trade ideas scan for candle patterns on the daily? And until about a week ago when Michael Noss, one of our expert users, showed me this, I was under the assumption that we had to create custom alerts or custom filters to try and do that stuff. Um, otherwise, the answer was, well, sure, we can identify candles and patterns and dojis and hammers on the intraday um, uh, library of events that we have. That's easy to find. But I want to show you guys something that you may not have been aware of. For those of you that find a doji on the daily chart interesting, or you know I have my washout bounce scan and my three-day tail bounce, bounce scan, those are kind of looking for hammers. Well, today is your lucky day because I want to show you something I think you're really going to like. Let's start by building a new top list. And we're just going to do something really simple here. Start from scratch. And let's just put in a couple of basic filters. Let's make the minimum price five and the maximum 200, say. Let's make sure we've got some average daily volume in there. Uh, we'll go ahead and use this average daily volume. We'll do 300,000. Check our work. Very good. And then the last thing is a bigger picture filter, which I like to call a bigger picture filter. I only want to see things that are above the 50-day moving average. I don't want to see downtrends. I don't want to see choppy sideways stuff. I want to see stuff that's above the 50-day. So all we do is go to the minimum value, 0 0.01 assures us, if we check our work, that the price is at least one hundredth of a percent above the 50-day moving average. So Three filters, that's all we're going to start with. But here is where it gets fun, guys. Symbol list. If you go to existing list, um, remember that every evening trade ideas is having massive downloads of data, you know, for stock adjusted splits, um, <laughs> float, short float adjustments. But there's other things going on behind the scenes in addition to the Holly back testing. And I was not aware that the evening data dump has a function that looks for these candles. Now, how do we find it, guys? Again, I'll start over. Add existing list. Scroll down to about the middle here, and you'll see something called daily. Well, if we click the expand button here on this uh, tree, ooh, all of a sudden we've got things called doji, dragonfly doji, gravestone doji, hanging man. Okay, so what's happening here is every evening, Trade Ideas is identifying charts where the closing candle for that day, meaning yesterday, is going to show up as one of these patterns. And what that means is every day this list is being refreshed and replaced with new symbols that are going to show us in the key where it is yesterday. So let's play with Doji here. Let's start with this. So I'm going to click Doji, and what it does is it moves it over here to the left-hand side. Now we're going to point this top list that I just made with basic filters only to the list of the evening data dump that Trade Ideas did to try and identify some interesting candle patterns. Uh, we're not done yet. We've got some blank symbol, uh, blank uh, fields here, so I want to definitely move some columns into there. Change from the close probably wouldn't hurt. Relative volume probably wouldn't hurt because we want to assess these things today versus yesterday is going to be our signal candle 
and today we're going to see these things and how they're doing. Uh, we definitely need price. Let's add that. Um, let's see. I'd like to know uh, what else do we want to know here? Um, volume today. I'd like to know that. And maybe change from the close. So just a couple of data points we can put in there. I've got relative volume as well. And um, maybe 15 minute range if things are starting to heat up, we can sort by that. So here's our symbol uh, column list. All right, we're almost done. Let's just call this Daily Doji. And we're gonna launch it. And ta-da, all right. We've got a top list of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 symbols. Let's take a look at the daily chart as we click through these symbols. Count yesterday, perfect doji. All it's showing us is what happened yesterday. It's up to us to determine and sort how we want the things that we want to look at. But this is giving us a great head start for those of you out there that like to scan for candle patterns, BKS. Again, I'm going to highlight it's yesterday, doji. Nothing interesting there after a big run. Probably was ready for a pullback after that doji. FRO, doji, yesterday. So you'll get the picture as I click through these. Every one of these finished yesterday. And again, the keyword is not today, it's yesterday. Every one of these finished yesterday in a doji. Very interesting. So what we could do with something like this is maybe we sort by a change in the last five minutes and try and keep an eye on what's maybe moving quickly in the last 15 minutes uh, to the upside or the downside. And uh, that's one way to maybe utilize that, okay? So there's one idea. What about if we wanted to use, um, say, the hammer? Well, here, again, those of you who have been to a lot of these webinars know that these two scans down here are pretty cranked down with filters. I don't usually get a whole lot of uh, uh, returns out of them, but if I do, I pay close attention to them. I'm looking for a hammer candle and then something moving above that hammer candle. So. How would we maybe find something like that? Well, it's pretty simple. This is how we might do that. New alert window. So now we're going from a top list to just kind of keep an eye on a bunch of stocks that might suit our interest. We're gonna start from scratch and do the same thing here. Uh, we'll just go window specific filters, minimum five, maximum 200. Um, average daily volume, 300,000 shares. And I just want it to be above the 50 day. It's not asking much. Okay, now we'll go do the same thing we did before. Symbol list, add existing list, scroll it on down to daily and open up the daily plus sign. And I'm looking for hammer and there it is. Well, I've already tagged it once, so I touch it and now it's active over here. Let's assign this stock. Oops, we forgot to do new highs, didn't we? New highs and keep this window blank for day trades. Otherwise, if we wanted a new 10-day high, we could put a 10 in there. But we want intraday new highs. So our alert is satisfied with the event of new high, the filters of $5 to 200, average daily volume 300,000, and all stocks are above their 50-day moving average. So now we're only going to point towards the stocks that had a hammer candle yesterday, but today are making new highs. All right, this is what we got. I didn't give it a title, so it calls it Edit Me. Let's take a look at the history. Go to today, and what we find is this one was coming through early and often. JBGS, what's this all about? Oh my, well, there it is. There's a beautiful hammer candle yesterday, and this window, which just took me about 45 seconds to create with a new event as a high and a couple filters, but only pointing towards the symbol list of the hammers hammer candles that were downloaded last night. So tonight, Trade Ideas is gonna come and the, basically the, the symbol list of hammer is gonna be a completely different list of symbols tomorrow than it was today, because remember, we're only keying off of yesterday. So this one was a nice winner, and I believe there was one more. Uh, yeah, UNWR, which basically closed up net change, but was also a doji. Funny Andy, this will probably show mm -hmm. up as a doji tomorrow <laughs> in, in the doji bin. So hopefully, I'm not going too fast. I mean, the, the, the big revelation was, one, I, I apologize. I'm sorry. This has been around for longer than I care to admit or realize, and we didn't do a good, a good enough job of making people aware of the daily pattern candle scan. So all you got to do real quick is just 
symbol list in any old deal, add existing list, find that uh, plus key next to daily, and hey, if you're into gravestone dojis, same thing. If you're into hanging mans, engulfing, bearish, bullish engulfing, all of those are going to show what happened the day prior, and then we'll use the trade ideas technology to either monitor it in real time using a top list or wait for a new high to come out, such as you know the uh, JBGS coming off of yesterday's um, hammer candle. So again, a lot of you guys have probably been to more than one webinar. I really, really like um, hammers on the daily. If they can build off of that and move higher, um, sometimes you can get a nice two or three day move out of something like that. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that makes sense. I have not been looking at the questions here, so let's take a look at how it's being received. Uh, this is great. I've never used that symbol list before. Well, according to about a week ago, neither did I. So I couldn't wait to share it with you guys. And uh, we're always going to try and, and, and improve on it um, going forward. But uh, it's a good place to start. Um, thank you for sharing this. Mm -hmm. Almost exactly, Armin. It's almost like an evening scan variation. However, you're not going to be able to scan in the evening for these because you're going to want to wait until the next morning. Because again, overnight, the trade ideas servers are crunching all the 7,500 symbols out there, trying to locate these patterns: gravestone dojis and hammers and, and dojis. Oh my! Um, so basically, I wouldn't call it an evening scan, but you could call Market it scan. a free market <laughs> scan. You could definitely yep. call it that. Uh, but it's a very cool technology. I didn't realize we had it, and I couldn't wait to show you guys. So um, for those that hung out for that, uh, good on you. For those that are watching on video, you know, if you have any more questions on that, you can always email us, info at trade-ideas.com. Um, yeah, David, I think, I, think, I think Holly actually goes deeper into the evening. You know, the AI is doing a million back tests tonight, and I think it probably goes way into the uh, middle of the – the morning, 2 or 3 a.m., something like that. Um, uh, d -d 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 okay, I'm just I'm seeing a lot of good uh, comments. Worth the wait, says Waleed. Good, I'm glad, I'm glad you hear that. Um, so any more questions on that going forward, you know, if you want further clarification, info at trade-ideas.com. We can try and uh, get back to you. Uh, really? Are you on the East Coast, David? That might be why. Your East Coast could be my West Coast time, and we're yep. probably on the same. Yeah, 11 p.m. You. I, see them, I see them come up every now and then at late in the evening. Yeah. Yep. Could you add sure. them so we can have them? I'm not sure what you mean, Frank, how I, how I add them, because they're already there. They're already there waiting for you. And any single scan you have in the configuration window, just go to the symbol list tab, existing list, and scroll down to the daily. And the very next day, all of these will be fresh from tonight. We'll have new symbols in there. Okay, good, Frank. It's it's there for you. There's nothing to share. Everybody has access to this list that's called daily. You just need to expand it. And again, for those that like uh, engulfing patterns or dark clouds or any of these, um, from what I've seen so far, they seem to be okay and right on. And I think the the demonstration that I just gave you right here using that hammer symbol list and just building a simple new high is just going to show you stocks that are making new highs today after a nice hammer yesterday. And those are interesting to me 24-7. Yes. All right. So I um, thank you guys for the uh, uh, for the feedback there. I, I thought it would be well received, and it does appear so. So let's do this, um, Andy. That That's all I've got for content today. But let's take five, and we'll cap it at five uh, chart requests. And if sure. we throw a symbol in there, we'll look at five of them. It helps to know if you tell us if you're long, short, or you're thinking about getting long, thinking about getting short, or if you're you know, hanging on by a thread, you want to know what your out is, anything you can do. So here comes the first one. We'll do five, as I said. Uh, Omar is requesting STX. STX. What is STX? Seagate technology. Well, technology. And let's zoom out. That's going to be the first thing we want to do because that's very interesting at first glance. And it's still very interesting. This is looking mm -hmm. a lot until we get back to here. So now we can go back to here and we can start to say in the history, because we blew through that. So essentially, this is going to be your, your, your next bogey here. In the history, you can see it touched it almost once, twice, and then three times here on this head and shoulders pattern. This thing may have some more room to run. So looking in the history, that's your long-term bogey. But I love 
love, love what I'm seeing here. The moving mm -hmm. averages are all fanned out and the 10 period is coming up. Holly saw something you liked back here a few days ago in the money, but the sideways action is what I'm always looking for to create a price alert. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create one right here. Create price alert. Uh, this came from the webinar. Ooh, look at this. Even better, short float 21% according to trade ideas. And it would be a 52 week high if it did. Um, so I'm gonna make those notes accordingly. And I like that. I thank you for pointing that out to me. I'm gonna keep that in there. That's a good looking chart. And again, mm -hmm. the upside, if it does break higher, probably the 6331 level, all you gotta do is just go back in the history to basically see where the next level of supply may show up. Good, uh, good eye there, Omar, I like that. Okay, ENPH, in at 396, you sold half at 438, very good. What should I watch for? All right, uh, I lost the symbol, uh, ENPH, sounds like a, Okay, it's an energy company. Uh, I'm just curious, I'm looking at some of the basic stats here. Average daily is good. Uh, earnings are behind you, that's good. The short floats, minuscule, not bad. So here's another example of the 10 period moving averages. They're all fanned out nicely. And it's basically walking this thing up. And when you see the price not even get near the 10 period and blast off away from it, I always kind of think of magnets when you try and hold two opposite ends or the same ends of a magnet and it pushes apart. The price wants nothing to do with even touching this moving average. That being said, today's candle, a little suspect. You know, for those that have the, the candle patterns down, that's some sort of a gravestone or shooting star. I don't know what you call it, but in my world, that could be a bit bearish and could signal maybe a couple days of pullback. So if you you sold half, which was great back down here, but if you really want to try and let that other half work, be prepared to maybe sit through a couple days of pullback. But what you don't want to see is a close below this rising 10 period moving average. Um, this one's definitely got ahead of itself. That's a nice trade and I'm sure you can agree, um, John, when, I'm, when I talk about selling half, how easy it is to not wig out emotionally on the other half and let it work for you. I can imagine that you've uh, experienced that in a trade like this by kicking half basically back here when you did, it looks like. Good job. Okay, um, I have a chart with only dojis and one with only hammers. Which one's the better to trade? Marguerite, I like the ones, like I said earlier, with a hammer and then the very next day it starts making highs. So, you know, if you wanna go back and watch the video when we upload it tonight, you know, you could follow the steps I did in making an alert with new highs, a couple of basic filters, and then going to that symbol list, finding the hammer. And basically it's yesterday's hammer, but today's new highs. That's that's a setup that I, I really do like much better than a, a doji. Um, salt is a request. And for the salt stock, do you think it'll bounce to 810? This is a messy, messy, messy chart. And it's basically a range bound chart for the most part. I'm just gonna try and eyeball what I see as the range. This is kind of what I see as the range here in this thing. Um, going back and forth now, you'll notice Trade Ideas does have a suggested uh, swing stop in here. If it breaks this level, it's probably going to go down and retest this level again. And it's kind of a foregone conclusion that it may want to do that. Also, notice the 10 period moving average, which I've been citing a lot recently, is sloping downward, and now it's suppressing the price. It's the hand that's holding the head down and not letting the price bounce back up. I mean, I hate to say it, you, you could get a bounce, but you might have to go down to 701 and see what happens there before the bounce comes. It's, that makes sense, Andy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's that that yeah, that's a very sloppy chart there. I I tend to avoid those, uh, but um, if you're in it, uh, yeah, that lower line that he dropped, the drop below seven, uh, I would yeah definitely be uh, wary of. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, sorry I can't give you a better definition, but this is just a really range bound uh, no man's land chart for the most part. Mm -hmm. It's just bouncing back and forth between those two lines. So, and then when I see that, I almost fully expect it since we're so close and if the algorithms, the way they think, hey, we're so close, let's stop by for a drink, you know? So we're so close, let's go down and lift the rug and see if there's any stops down here. I, you know, I, I don't wanna be a prognosticator, but I wouldn't be surprised in a few days from now if you see a day where the price fell down below that line and then sucked right back up as they ran the stops. That might be what you're looking for, for a reversal 
or the hammer candles we've just been talking about to bounce back up into the range again. All right, BSPM was the next one. And BSPM, not bad, uh, pharmaceutical. Um, let's see, average daily, what's that? Uh, kind of light at 161,000. Uh, earnings dates coming up in 17 days. Uh, the moving averages are fanning out nicely. It's you know try, definitely built a base here, and you can see the trade idea swing exit is showing you that red line right there. Um, if you don't have this on your chart yet, uh, don't fret. It's probably coming out on the next release, or you could download the beta version. But uh, we're adding more guidelines um, for longer-term trading to our daily charts here. Um, let's see to rephrase the question would be great to hear your thoughts i am long here okay well we've had about four days of green candle um and we're pretty far above the moving average that i like to key on and which is now sloping in the upward direction uh i i feel like it wouldn't be surprised if there's a day or two to maybe pull back to this thing and they're going to retest the price action might retest this moving average um, but let me give you a simpler answer. Just like I said in the general market today, the way we closed with a doji, typically when you have a narrow range doji like that, the next day, whichever range it takes out, the high or the low, is probably going to be the direction it wants to head for the near term. So if it does pull back, I would watch this rising moving average right there, the 10 SMA, uh, for, as you can see, the bottom of these wicks down here held that 10 SMA for the most part. So I would I would hope and anticipate that it uh, does it again. All right, so the last one is uh, for Raul at uh, ZS. Now this, I've heard of this one. This is a new issue, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <You> ask. <laughs> wedging. Well, it's wedging. <laughs> Just go ahead and draw it. Uh, I, something tells me that I think you were kind of uh, being silly when you asked me to look at this chart. Uh, because we don't have a whole lot of data points to go off of <laughs> other than the point that it is um, wedging. And whoops, what do I mean by that? It's uh, three days of, uh, of action is only giving us a small hint of a triangle. It's painting itself into a corner, mm -hmm. where it goes, I would use those lines as your guide. I'm not an expert on new issues. I like to at least let them get a little bit of data under their belt before we start. Gosh darn it, this thing is giving me trouble as usual. There we go. Yep. <laughs> Roughly <laughs> speaking. Well, it's all right. I think, so you know, I think, the I think you guys got the idea. Um, jumping into that market open. Well, if you're gonna jump into that market open, I would say really you gotta have enough staying power to withstand a low below today's closing, um, or maybe use those uh, wedge lines as a guide. But um, yeah, I've heard of this one. This one had a great opening day. This was the one Barry was talking about last week, Andy. Oh, you were gone mm -hmm. on vacation. Mm -hmm. uh, Barry right. jumped into that on the open IPO. Oh, which by the way, thank you for that reminder. Before I go, some people say, hey, do you guys have an IPO alert? Well, we don't until I realized that the resume the halt and the resume alerts will work in the same fashion. Barry said the only way he, he saw that ZS coming through was um, using, if we go to search, we have resume, we have halt. That right there as an alert, if you build an alert window on that, this will catch IPOs coming through. It's the, the system basically thinks it's resuming. Yeah, interesting. And Barry said he's seen that a lot lately, so he's he's holding a lot of confidence and faith that if you want to, you know, catch a new IPO when it starts trading, um, that's the alert that you would want to use and it should catch it without even a symbol list. All right, guys. Well, that's all we have for you today. Um, thanks for the great attendance. Thanks for the great questions and the feedback on that uh, silly little thing that we didn't know about until now. Uh, but better late than never. Okay. Uh, let's bring in Scott, and uh, he's got a signing up you might want to look at. Uh, thanks, everyone, for attending. Um, please make sure you're subscribed to the podcast. Really easy to find. Just search for Trade Ideas Podcast in the app that you use to subscribe and listen to your podcasts and add it. And then you can listen to last week's episode and stay tuned for this week's, which will come out on Friday. We do them weekly. So uh, they're always interesting. Make sure you're subscribed. Also... We have a book. 
Just go Thanks to trademarkideas.com slash ebook. Uh, Steve and Jamie were nice enough to contribute uh, chapters to the book. It's a great way to put some additional strategies in your trader's toolbox for when the market isn't on a bull run and buying the dip doesn't really work. So just uh, make sure you get it. It's free. Uh, go to that URL and plug in your email. You'll get the download. Uh, we have a code for a discount. Just use the code. So actually, <laughs> All caps, just like it is on the screen, and that'll save you 15% off your first month or year of Trade Ideas Premium or Standard. Uh, you can also use that code to upgrade from Standard to Premium by just logging in and uh, logging into the website in the upper right. Go to Login, go to your Account Management section, and click on Change Your Subscription. Use that code when you're doing it. Um, any questions, just shoot us an email, info at trade-ideas.com. Follow Steve on Twitter at TodayTrader. We also have Trade Ideas 1's Dan Merkin. We've got some other handles out there. And if you follow us on Facebook, Trade Ideas Pro on Facebook, like our page, and then you can share everything we post with all your friends. And we don't even have to contract with Cambridge to do it. Uh, any, any questions, email info at trade-ideas.com. Trade or uh, you can also download the handout, expand the handouts panel on your go to love in our interface and click on the blue link. Save that to your desktop and then do all the same stuff. Share all our stuff with your friends on Facebook. And use the code for a discount on upgrading, all that fun stuff. Uh, we'll have the replay of this up uh, later on tonight or tomorrow morning, and you'll get an email link. Um, you get an email with a reminder of where to find that and uh, the code and all that kind of good stuff. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Jay. Thanks, Andy. Right. Thank you, everybody. Thank and, you, guys. Uh, talk to you next time. I'll see you on Thursday. Bye-bye. <laughs>